hello. I am actually back home after my very long Camino de Santiago. And everybody that uh, has had a crack or a look at my video says I should do sort of an equipment review uh, of what worked, what didn't work, what I should have brought, what I didn't bring, that kind of stuff. And so what I did is I thought, all right, I'll put something quick together that sort of culminates what I've learned after hiking the Camino for 500 miles in 33 days. So uh, I'll start with the most important thing I think of the entire journey was the shoes. Uh, I, my, my thing was this, I did a, uh, it's a Solomon Quest. I actually bought them specifically for the journey and spent maybe, I don't know, two weeks breaking them in. Probably could have broken them in a little bit more. They were still a little stiff, uh, but they worked like a freaking champ. These were awesome. Now my, uh, my routine was, and what worked for me, was to use what's called a silk liner. So if you go to like REI or one of the kind of places that sells outdoor equipment, they'll have silk liners, but a, a dress silk sock will work as well. And then what you do is you put another sock over it. Now what I did, I didn't actually use these. Uh, the ones I used are in the wash, but they, uh, they're they double lined. They're called right socks, spelled W-R-I-G-H-T. And they're really handy at preventing blisters. They worked fantastic for me. I mean, the only blisters I really got is when I changed shoes. Now when it comes to shoes, obviously you're gonna need the ones to hike in. And very often, uh, they might get wet. So at the very end of it, you might need to be drying those out. So you always bring something extra. Now I brought uh, a pair of like sandals or flip flops. And then I also brought a very lightweight uh, shoe, like a tennis shoe. So in case I was gonna be trekking around a town or going up and down stairs and places, I wanted something more than just a sandal. So it seemed to work really well for me. All right, the second most important item was, I'd say the pack. Uh, in my case, what I used was this. It was a Osprey. Uh, the brand Osprey is pretty cool. They, uh, they have almost every pack that I've seen that's come out by Osprey has this really nifty section where you can actually put your trekking poles and the poles literally go through these hooks and it'll go onto the side here. So in the event that you're walking and you don't need your trekking poles, you actually have this really nifty place because the trekking poles are collapsible and you'll put them there and it actually makes it really handy. Now this pack worked like a champ. I really loved it. It's the Kestrel, I think it's the 48. Yeah, Kestrel 48 was the one I used. Now one of the cool things I liked about this pack is it has a separate compartment below for a sleeping bag. So I was able to open it up. So if you get into an albergue at night or you need to basically get your pack out without having to rummage through the rest of your gear, having a separate compartment was really helpful. It seemed to help a lot. The pack uh, also has a bladder. And this is really nifty, especially if you are gonna be hiking in the heat. Now, you gotta get your own bladder. It didn't come with it, but this is a typical bladder that you'll see and what it is, is it's just basically something you can fill up. It, it'll do about, I want to say a liter, maybe a two liters. It'll do two liters of water. One of the tricks about this is you have to fill this, get it into your pack before you pack your pack. If you try to stuff a two liter bag of water into the compartment, which is right here, it's uh, behind the straps itself. And there's an actual compartment down here. Uh, and then what's cool is this little uh, tube actually comes out and it runs down through the straps on your shoulder pad, which makes it pretty nifty. And so as you're walking, if you need water, uh, it's always there. And I've used this, I can't count how often I ended up using this. I was very thankful I had the bladder in the pack. So Kestrel 38 also has really nifty uh, access. It has a top section, which I really liked. You could open it up. And what I ended up doing is putting all the kind of papers that I would be using all the time. Like uh, if you're doing the entire journey, if you're doing it for the Compostela, the Compostela will look like this. And, you know, basically putting it in one of those packs means, or one of the pockets is very easy to access. I can pull it out, get stamped at the different cathedrals or at the Albergs. The only drawback, uh, the Kestrel, this mesh back here, it's sort of weak and I don't know how, but mine tore. It really didn't have anything sharp in there. It just seemed to be a fabric defect. Like it's not made very strong there. So, but the other good thing about this pack is it's what's called a compression pack. So 
as you fill up your uh, pack, after you're done, it has all these ways to really strap your pack and compress it tighter. So it's got these kind of straps that are adjustable on the sides, and what'll happen is as your pack gets full, and you need to really clamp it down, you can do that, and it sort of compacts your pack and brings the weight closer to your back. The other thing I really liked about this, now out on the trail, it seemed a lot of people had backpacks that didn't fit. Like the where the shoulder went over to, compared to where their waist hip was, it was either too short, and so they'd have really sore shoulders, uh, or sometimes it was too tall. And so their waist would really much have to take the entire brunt of the pack weight. But this thing has this really nifty, it's like a, it's a Velcro backing. So it, it can be sized. So what happens is you can undo it, adjust the size to where it fits you perfect. And then, I don't know, there was nothing about this thing I didn't like other than that mesh thing in the back. The, it's also got pockets on the waist, which you find pretty handy for stuff that you're always grabbing. So, well, one more item about the Osprey. Um, the pack itself, I ordered it off of a website called Moose Jaw, and they were running a promotion that if you bought the pack, they threw in what's called an air porter bag. And what that is, is basically this. It looks like a little poncho, but it's designed to, you know, you unzip this thing and it folds out to be this huge bag, which you can put your backpack in and then check it as luggage. And this was really helpful because I jammed a bunch of other stuff in there too, stuff that, you know, really didn't fit in the pack. But this one humongous big sack became really, really cool. And it's durable, it's uh, the ripstop material. I ended up shipping this ahead to Santiago because I didn't want to carry this whole thing. And you know, you'll find that if you don't have that ability or if you're not gonna ship it forward, then you probably don't want something like this. But this, they threw in when I bought the pack, which was really cool. The next item I want to bring up is this, the trekking poles. Now, I have to say, I don't think I could have done a lot of the hiking that you do without these. These were just invaluable. Um, when I first was going to go on this journey, I didn't know if I'd just get a walking stick, one trekking pole. Two seemed a little like overkill to me. And so I ended up ordering a trekking pole. And the pole I got was sort of low quality. Um, but, uh, and I, I got it from a place called Bugle Boy online. And when I sort of told the guy what I was doing, his name was Norman really super cool guy. I told him, well, I don't think the trekking pole sort of the strength I need. I thought I would have to shell out and pay a lot of money for some trekking poles. And he said, you know what? I've got a pair that I, they're, they're really strong. They're durable and I think they'd work for you. And so he ends up sending me this thing. They're called pacemakers. And now they weren't nearly as expensive. They're a lot cheaper than the European Lecky poles or the ones I was seeing a lot of that are made in Germany. Those things are like 200 bucks and these are way less and they worked like a freaking champ. They were awesome. And the other thing too, when you get a trekking pole, they have like different attachments, right? That you can put on the bottom. One looks like a ski attachment. One's like this little rubber feet. Well, the little rubber feet I wore through within maybe four days. And then I had brought these not knowing I could use them, but I ended up yeah, taking them out, putting them on. Now, let me show you a close-up of those. They're like a big gummy foot with spikes all over it. And these work so great. I would tell you, don't even go with the regular uh, points. Go get these on your stick. These things pretty much went, I want to say 450 miles like that, and they're still holding up. And the reason is, the you'll see a lot of people using the trekking poles, and as they're going over cement or wet rocks, they, they have no grip. But this worked everywhere. It worked on the dirt, it worked on uh, cement, it worked on rocks. It just was a perfect, you know, grip every time you went. And I got to tell you, I really, there was a couple days that the inclines were so steep, and sometimes after a very brutal rain, it was just a wall of mud. I saw people sliding down, falling. It was very common to see a lot of pretty much trail wipeouts. And if I didn't have these, I would have wiped out too. But I made the entire journey, the entire 500 miles without one spill, one fall, mainly because of these. These things were just top of the notch. And I want to thank Norman for steering these to me. He was really cool, really great guy. The next item, sleeping bag. Um, a lot of people actually went on the Camino without a bag. They said, oh, I'm going to be an Alberg. I'll have a... A blanket well I would suggest bringing a sleeping bag and I brought this really lightweight one it's like a pound and a half I think now yeah it's a pound and a half 
and carrying a pound and a half over 500 miles does, you know, add up. But there are nights that if I didn't have this, I would have been very uncomfortable. Uh, a lot of people just bring a sleeping bag liner, you know, the, the liner that's on the inside of a bag. And they were okay, but there were many nights that, uh, like if you didn't make it to an Albury and you have to sleep outside, you've got to find some way to keep warm. And I, uh, one night I even slept outside on purpose just because it was so beautiful and um, the stars were so clear. And if I didn't have this, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I would highly recommend getting a very lightweight bag. You don't need a, you know, tra you know, thing that can handle up snow temperatures. This thing will be fine if you just have something that can handle, you know, regular, uh, maybe weather down to 40 or 50 degrees, you know, that's probably all you need um, But this also was a cool I got this off Amazon. I don't even know the brand really uh, Feather light I think is the name and it has these straps that you can compress, you know So when your when your bag is rolled up It's a lot bigger than this But after it gets in the bag and you winch it down it becomes very small and can fit into that compartment in the pack Which was very helpful all right, the next thing I discovered I needed, and I didn't even bring one when I went, was a hat. Now, when I was looking for a hat, there was a guy who I started hiking with uh, named Stefano. Stefano was a great guy. He's from Italy. Stefano had an extra hat, and it was a brim hat. It was very nice. It had, like, a really nice brim. And I asked him, hey, let me buy your hat. He wouldn't sell it to me, and I really wanted that hat. I kept up in my price. He kept saying no. So I ended up buying a hat that I was very unhappy with, not because it didn't work, but because it looked like you're a French Foreign Legion officer. Now me, being a foreign Marine, don't ever want to wear a hat that would make me look like the French Foreign Legion. And Stefano happened to have a hat just like this as well. So for a, a, maybe two days, I had to wear one like this just because I had no other hat. And it was burning hot outside, and this really did work great in the sun, despite my desire not to look like a French Foreign Legion officer. So, but it worked well for the sun. I eventually swapped it out for a brim hat, which sort of brings me back to my recon days in the Marines, which is what we sort of wore these kind of hats. And I loved this one. This was a, it's just a cloth fabric, not a very waterproof hat. I would, if you're gonna be taking a hat, which you should, you should get the kind that's also gonna be water resistant. Now, speaking of water, um, if you are going to do the Camino, especially the full Camino, like 500 miles or even close to that, you can bet you're gonna get drenched. You are gonna be soaked at some point. There's going to be a massive rainstorm and it's not gonna be a little storm. It's gonna be big. Uh, going back to the pack, the pack has a nifty little, it's like a, uh, it's a cover. It's a rain cover that pulls out and it actually goes over the whole pack. Now it's not the most waterproof. It's water still finds a way to get through. And a couple of the days when we hiked, it was so bad that literally every square inch of my body got soaked. So it taught me a couple of very important things. One, uh, moving on to electronics. If you are planning to bring a phone, an iPad, laptop, Weight is key. Don't carry something big. If you carry a big laptop, it's going to be heavy. You're going to hate that thing before you know it. Make sure it's waterproof. Put it in Ziplocs. But the other thing you're going to find you'll need is uh, a, an adapter. The European adapters look like that. They're basically a two-prong. You can get the ones here in the U.S. Uh, that are a lot smaller than this big contraption. I actually lost the one I had brought and ended up founding a store. And they had these, and they were like a dollar eighty each. So I bought a uh, a couple, but these things, uh, they're handy. Bring a few. Uh, there's often, if you got multiple things to charge, very, you know, outlets become a sort of a commodity in an Albert. And so if you have that opportunity to plug into multiple places, uh, it's really handy because then you can plug in your phone, your camera, your batteries, whatever you're trying to charge up so you have something to basically do. The cool thing about these things too, they're interlockable. So if you have more than one, you could just store them like that. And it's not like you're taking up a lot of space. I should have brought my poncho. Now there was a poncho I had, which I packed from uh, St. Jean all the way to Pamplona thinking, well, I'm not gonna use this anymore. Uh, I, I've gotten through the bad parts of the weather. So I shipped this forward. 
And what uh, unfortunately happened is the big storms came after. So I could have really used the poncho after I shipped it for it. So bring a poncho. This was a pretty uh, sizable poncho that would go over the backpack as well. So this would have really helped, but I didn't have it. Wish I did. Um, another thing I learned is that the most important thing is to have everything wrapped up in Ziploc bags. So I have er I brought every kind of Ziploc size. I brought the little ones, then like snack sandwich ones. I brought the, the like the slightly bigger ones. I brought the big freezer bags. Basically, you'll find that everything of importance that you can put in a Ziploc bag will keep it dry. Even socks, even shirts, even underwear. If you had it in a Ziploc bag and you put it in your pack and it got drenched, it's okay, they're still waterproof. These things weigh nothing, yet they work like a champ. So waterproof yourself that way. Go poncho. Uh, hat is good for both the sun and water, mainly the sun. The sun is what's gonna pound you the most especially if you're going in the summer. It's just pretty unrelenting. Uh, I would also recommend bringing a very lightweight, good pair of sunglasses just because it's bright. And sometimes in the middle section, the Meseta portion, which is like the desert, if you don't have sunglasses, you were just, uh, it's too bright. You'll be like not very comfortable, not happy. Okay, the other item that I did bring, I actually brought two of them, but I've lost them on the journey, was laundry bags. You know those mesh kind of laundry bags that you can put your laundry in and zip up? It's really, really handy to have a couple of those. They weigh nothing. They're very cheap to buy. I think I bought one for three bucks. And uh, when you do laundry, especially if you're doing it in a communal setting, everybody's sort of pitching in and saying, let's uh, put our laundry in the same washer, having all your stuff in one bag that you can just throw in, it sort of saves the hassle of digging through socks and your clothes to find out what is yours. You're just having it in that bag, throwing it in, you can wash it and throw it in the dryer. Uh, when it comes to drying, a lot of places didn't have dryers. So you ended up clothesline or hanging your stuff out to dry. And this became sort of a, a, a difficult challenge because a lot of times clothesline, they would have the little clothes pins, but they would all be used. Uh, one of the girls on our thing brought this really nifty, it was a clothesline, you know, just like a regular line where you're making your own laundry line, but hers looked like a rubber band that had spaces in it. And what you can do is put your clothes through it, it would hang, you didn't need clothes pins. Her thing was brilliant. Uh, I wish I had thought of something like that to bring, I could have used it many times. Uh, but a clothesline or 550 cord or nylon cord really works as a clothesline as well. The other cool thing to bring is a thing called a ditty bag. Now, a ditty bag is basically just a canvas sack. And what's nifty about these, they come in multiple sizes. You can buy them small, medium, and large. What I would recommend to do, I, I bought two exact sets. So I had two red, two blue, two yellow. And I would have not done that. I would have made sure I had a unique color for every bag. The reason being is I knew that, okay, if I knew the blue bag was my shaving kit, I'd always grab that when I need my shaving kit. But if I had two of them, now I had to sort through which one was which. So uh, the cool thing about the Diddy Bags too, uh, they have this kind of ceiling top. Now it does, it's not waterproof, but it has like this connector, right? So it'll hang, so you can hang it somewhere. And it's also really handy when it's clipped up like that in your pack, when you reach down and you pull it out, it's all there. These things, they're very cheap. You can get packs of three or six and you just basically separate your stuff. Like what I did is I had one for underwear, one for socks, one for t-shirts, and I just basically know, okay, there's my socks, there's my shirts. And then it became very easy to find stuff. And this way, when you pack your backpack, you don't have socks and, you know, your extra shoes over here and your extra thing over here, etc. cetera. Uh, you also wanna make sure that your laundry, whatever your laundry's in, is some kind of plastic sack. Often your laundry is gonna be wet. It's going to be uh, drenched from whatever, maybe the day's rain, maybe just your sweat, whatever it is. So you need to pack that away so it's not stinking up the rest of your stuff. And I did that by, I actually brought a Mac computer bag, like from the Apple store, because it has a drawstring. It worked great, something like that, where it's just a big bag, you can put your stuff in, cinch it where it's tight, roll it up and stick it away. And that worked pretty well. When it comes to first aid, I actually brought a whole first aid kit. Uh, I ended up not needing anything in it really. Uh, the only thing you will find yourself needing is stuff for blisters. You'll probably need a needle and thread, so bring a little uh, sewing kit, or lots of people on the trail will have one. Uh, you can also buy them there. 
Uh, the other thing you're going to become very accustomed to, especially if you do the entire journey, is ibuprofen. Uh, in most of the pharmacies, you can buy 600 milligram strength ibuprofen, you know, get a big pack of it and it costs about two euro, which is really inexpensive. Uh, you don't need to stock up on this and carry it with you. You can pretty much get it at every pharmacy or just get enough to make it. You know, trust me, if you don't take this, you will be by the time you do the journey. Uh, moving on to electronics, if you are planning to bring a phone, an iPad, laptop, weight is key. Don't carry something big. If you carry a big laptop, it's going to be heavy. You're going to hate that thing before you know it. Make sure it's waterproof, put it in Ziplocs. But the other thing you're going to find you'll need is uh, a, an adapter. The European adapters look like that. They're basically a two-prong. You can get the ones here in the U.S. Uh, that are a lot smaller than this big contraption. I actually lost the one I had brought and ended up founding a store and they had these and they were like a dollar eighty each so I bought a uh, a couple but these things uh, they're handy bring a few uh, there's often if you got multiple things to charge very you know outlets become a sort of a commodity in an Albert and so if you have that opportunity to plug into multiple places uh, it's really handy because then you can plug in your phone your camera your batteries whatever you're trying to charge up so you have something to basically do the cool thing about these things too they're interlockable so if you have more than one you could just store them like that and it's not like you're taking up a lot of space. Last bit, clothes. I brought way too much clothes. I thought, okay, I'll bring a week's worth. Really, I by the time I was done, I narrowed it down to three of everything. Three sets of socks. Now for me, a set of sock was a silk liner and a sock. So I, you know, the silk liners are so thin, the sock, but basically three, three underwear, three shirts. That's it. You don't need the rest and you'll need a jacket you'll need like a good windbreaker or something uh, because it does get cold out there the other thing and if you watch my earlier blogs or videos bring a scarf a scarf is one of the best things you'll use out there it's got all kinds of purposes it'll block the sun you can wet it put it around your neck it'll keep you cool and there are times when you're going on this journey that you will be going through areas with lots and lots of insects and so it becomes a pretty good scarf over the face to protect you from eating or ingesting these bugs, okay? So that's it, that's my brief equipment review of what I found I needed and what I didn't need on the trail. If I've missed something, I apologize. You're welcome to uh, send me an email and if I can remember, I'll send you a response, all right? So, adios and buen camino.